So, Mr. Brian Moses, I hear you've been using something called ES Presence to trigger some of your home automation. How the heck does that work? Well, it it's really interesting. Um, I use it. I guess it's not a. Well, it's a it's a trigger of sorts, but it's a it's a presence detection software. It runs on ESP32 development boards, and it uses um, it's Bluetooth functionality to track Bluetooth devices. So in my particular case, I have it tracking my watch. And what I, what I ran into a long time ago is, is I got a, I got a motion sensor in my office and I wanted to use it to control my lights, except for most of the time I'm in my office, except when I'm on the blog, I'm not moving around very much. And, you know, if you don't register motion, the lights eventually turn off and there's, there's no good way to do it. You, I wound up doing a, a lot of timed based stuff. You know, if I don't move for hours, then it would turn the lights off, but that, that doesn't work very well. Well, it's and wasteful I, when they it's, stay it's, on for a long yeah, time. Not that lights wasteful. are expensive to run. Home, but, on, home automating lights would have been fantastic when we were kids and you had 860 watt light bulbs to dimly light a room, right? And yes, yeah. <laughs> now, now so much with all of these LED bulbs, it's not, it's not nearly the savings that it used to be. Um, and what I wound up, what I wound up doing is, I use ES Presence to detect when I've left the room to go ahead and turn off the lights. I use the motion coming into the room to turn on the lights, but then. The lack of my, you know, when my watch leaves this room, then the lights get turned off. It waits five minutes first, but it turns off the, it turns off my lights in my office so a few how do you, minutes How do you afterwards. work this? You, you just, do you just have one ESP32 in your home, in your I office? Have, and... I have one in my, I have, I have five across my house, but in all five of the Five of them, rooms, that must have cost thousands of dollars. No, they're not. They're they're pretty cheap. They're like uh, five bucks on Amazon, I think. Okay, I might I might be off on my prices there. Yeah. So the for fifty a hundred bucks, you can put these all over your house and track yeah, all, devices. All together, here I wound up. This is this is one. Well, where can we get that, Tubby? Well, after my. I wrote one. I wrote a blog a few months ago about ES Presence after learning about it and immediately, you know, sitting down and getting it all set up and working in my house. And then some of the feedback that I got on that blog were from people that were interested and didn't have access to all the things that you needed to have access to. Primarily the 3D printer. I mean, I guess lots of people don't have 3D printers or easy access to 3D printers. And Tubby, I, tried... I have an ESP dev board for on the tracker in my recliner over here, the, pre the chair uh -huh. pressure sensor. I wrapped electrical tape around it a whole bunch and stuffed it into the, into the chair somewhere. It's just hiding in there. It's not, I didn't even do a good job, Tubby. I just did it fast and threw it in there. You're doing a good yeah, job because you have nice, pretty 3D printed cases. Job. Yeah, I, uh, when I when I did my first blog, I wound up finding somebody else's print. I, his name is Roger with a zero on printables.com. and he has a he has a great model, um, and I use that. Those are in on those five across my house. Um, but after the after the people asked me about cases, I decided that I would design and print cases and sell them on my Tindy store for everybody's ESP32 projects, not just not just the S presence. That's one of them. That's yours. And you you read you designed that in OpenSCAD. This is my design in OpenSCAD and it's up on printables and anybody can download it and print it for free. Um, and anybody who doesn't have access to a printer, they can just go to my Tindy store and place an order. There's a I think seven styles in these vent. I don't know what to call. It. They're ventilation holes or yeah, sig 
signal penetration gaps. I don't know what to call them. I I just called them styles. In addition to that, on on Tindy, I'm selling a whole base station kit that's uh, ready to go, flashed with ES presence. You get the the little power, the little USB power brick, the cable, and the SP32 and case, all in all in this little kit. And it's all flashed, and I imagine you'll, when you get it home, you plug it in, it'll look like a Wi-Fi access point so you can connect yep. to it and configure it? Yeah, you plug it in, and it'll it'll be an access point that you connect to and punch in the details about your Home Assistant server and the MQTT credentials. Well, it's cool that somebody doesn't have to figure out how to flash ES presence. I'm sure it's not terribly difficult, but I know... I know a lot of people don't like to bother with things like this. Yeah, it's it's so, really it's really easy to do. In fact, I would I would tell everybody to just go out, buy some cheap ESP32 dev boards and tinker with it cuz I think I think that's a lot of fun. But there are a lot of people who don't who don't think that's fun. They I don't I don't want to say it's intimidating, but it's it's hassle and work. And yeah. I just, well, and if this is one of the first things you're doing with Home Assistant, you have to Figure out how to install Home Assistant. Figure out how to set up Home Assistant. Figure out how to set up MQTT. Figure out how to flash yep. ES Presence. Figure out how to configure ES Presence. There's like seven steps just to yeah. get here. Yeah, it's it's a little. I mean, when you the whole totality of all of that is it's a lot, and yep. making that a little bit easier is. Yeah, if you've been running Home Assistant for three years, and this is just one more new thing you're going to add today. Not a big deal to do all yeah. of this from scratch, but I could see it being intimidating if you're just starting out. I agree. Now you've got me tempted to try this out. Can I? Can I buy one of these from you? Yeah. On your Tindy store, fact, I if, do not carry any Bluetooth device. My phone, I put it. My phone does two things. I pick it up. I pick it up in the morning when I wake up, and I tend to put it down here on my desk. And I may never touch it again until I go to sleep sometimes. So it doesn't really track it, but it does go back with me when I go to sleep. All yeah. Because I want I it use, in there just in case. So I use, the, I use the one in my bedroom. I have one in my bedroom. And anytime that my phone is charging and my, my watch is in my bedroom, I've decided that I'm asleep. And then... You know that that's one of the triggers to turn off the off all the lights in my office. I don't need the lights on when I'm asleep. I I don't have automation again yet to turn my espresso machine on in the morning because it doesn't know when I'm awake. I I do it on my phone manually. I'm a barbarian. Yeah. I turn on my espresso oh, machine. My goodness. And I always make almost always make two espressos during the day towards the morning, but there's no predictability on when that's going to be. And I cheat. I reach behind the espresso machine and I push the button on the smart switch to just shut it off so it's ready for the next day. It's, I've been doing this for months like this, like a caveman. That's, and I need to set up some logic. It's tragic. This, this pains me in my soul. I know, home, right? In my home automating soul. And I used to have, all, I used to have this automated too. Yeah. Five years ago, before Home Assistant was before I was using Open Habit, it was it was fantastic. It would fire up in the morning. It would shut off at the right time. It would turn back on again if I left the house and came home, just in case I wanted a coffee when I came home. It was fantastic because you know it's not like we... a coffee mate, like a Mister Coffee. It needs at least twenty minutes to warm up, and more time is better, so all the parts yeah. get warm. I need this stuff. Yeah. I heard, Tubby, I know you don't have them in your store, but I heard you can wire up various things like uh, humidity and temperature sensors to these ES Presence boards. Yeah, yeah, the ES Presence has a few different a few different builds, but that supports, like, motion sensors, uh, humidity, temperature, there's a weight sensor. I feel like I'd have trouble aiming these anywhere where a motion sensor would help me. But I would love to have humidity and temperature 
yep. in every room. That would be nice. Just just to have it, not even necessarily to use yeah. with ES Presence, but to have ES Presence feeding that into your home automation. Yep. I'm yeah, always curious when my allergies are bothering me if the humidity's low in the house. Okay. But, yeah, you could see the humidity outside, but that doesn't tell with the AC running, that's taking a lot of humidity out of the air. So I don't really know what it is Yeah, in the room. I, and I, I haven't decided, I haven't decided it yet. I talk about it in my blog, but it'd be interesting to design a, another, another case like this one with, that works with one of the, the different kinds of sensors so that you could build, I want to say more feature laden ES presence base stations yeah and i don't know that i need all of these sensors in every room but i checked there i think the humidity sensor is the only one that's it's not pricey but it costs as much as like i think you could get like motion a motion sensor the esp board and a temperature sensor from amazon for the same price as just the humidity sensor Okay. You know, so the humidity sensor doubles the price no matter easily. Yeah. But it's still that's still only like nine bucks or something. It's not you know, it's, it's not yeah, ridiculous. It's, it's not gonna break the bank. No, definitely not. Definitely not. But I'd have to solder them on to everyone. I'd have to take the yeah. time to or wire what whatever. I'd have to wire them up somehow. It's It'd not be work. I'd have to do work. But I'm excited, Tubby. We'll post a link to your Tindy store. We'll post the link to my Tindy store. You're doing a good job, Tubby. I'm I'm excited. I'm excited. I'm uh I'm a little worried that I've that I wound up buying a whole bunch of ESP32 dev boards that I'll that I'll never use. That nobody's um, gonna buy. That nobody's ever gonna buy. So if you've got a good idea for other ESP32 projects, let me know in the comments down below, and maybe maybe there'll be something that catches my eye. And. Tubby, what you didn't say here is, not only can you buy these to not have to flash ES Presence, but you can buy them to support Brian C. Moses and his NAS builds and his blogs and all the content that he puts out for all you fine folks out there, all you friendly folks. Yeah, that'd be nice. I'd appreciate that. I would appreciate it, too. 